Hello, Oscillator Sync here. And today I'd like to talk to you about logic, and in particular, logic modules in Eurorack, because they feel like one of those really fundamental back to basics types of modules that are really, really useful in a lot of different contexts. And I don't think they get spoken about enough because they're not as flashy and ambient and uh, multi-purpose as some modules, but they really can offer some really interesting creative opportunities. I'm going to talk about them in a slightly unusual and maybe non-standard context, but let's actually first define what logic modules are and what they're usually used for. In essence, Logic modules are a way of combining two, or possibly in the case of these ones, two or more voltages. And depending on what type of logic you're applying and whether each of the input voltages are high or low, you will get a high or low output out. Generally, we think about them in terms of combining gates. So let's have a quick sort of run through of the different types of logics here just to give you a flavor for what they do in their sort of conventional setting so i've got a gate signal here which is long and slow and it's opening up a low pass gate with a oscillator going through it i've also got this shorter faster gate signal here that's also opening a low pass gate at the moment these two signals are independent of one another but let's say hypothetically we wanted to create a gate pattern where the shorter gates were only triggering when the longer gate was also open. Well, one way we could do this would be to take those two gate signals and combine them through an AND module. Now an AND module says that it's going to allow a high voltage into its output when both of the inputs are also high. It's a bit like a VCA. So now we have a gate pattern where that shorter gate can only come through when the longer gate is also open. Now perhaps we wanted to um, have it so that the shorter gates only happened when the long gate didn't happen. So a way we could do that is to take our long gate and put it through a not logic. And not logic is basically an inverter. So now we're going to be putting an inverted long gate into our AND gate. So this is now going to be high when the gate is shut. And now we've got a gate pattern where they alternate. Or perhaps we want to combine them so that we have a um, gate pattern which sort of contains both patterns together where we can combine those through an OR gate. So now our higher sound is essentially getting both of our gate patterns together a bit like a, a mixer but for gates specifically. We've also got this interesting uh, XOR gate here. This is going to sound a bit interesting. Kind of hear it flipping in the middle there. So an XOR gate allows a high voltage to its output when either of these uh, inputs are high, but not when both are high. So what you're getting is when the long gate is open, we're only going to be getting a little ping when the shorter gate is closed. But then when the long gate turns off, we're going to get the pattern that we already had. Which gives us a pretty interesting uh, rhythm there. So that's kind of a whistle-stop tour of the conventional way that we use logic modules. 
And if you're interested in learning more, I can highly recommend a uh, video by DivKid, uh, who has um, kind of predictively put out really, really good uh, video content on these concepts. I'll link to it in the description of this video. But for me, in this video, I want to go fast. I want to take a look at what these modules sound like when we put audio rate signals through them. I want to use them as processors and combiners uh, because they sound kind of awesome. And when you have a couple of them at your disposal, you can do massive sounds that kind of don't appear in other oscillators, I don't think. So let's check that out. The logic modules I'm using in this video are these neat little modules from Takab, which were sent to me by Siam Modular, an independent modular store in Thailand who ship across the world and who are also sponsoring this video. They've also provided a discount code so that viewers of my channel can get 10% off modules by using the code OSCILLATORSYNC, all one word, at the checkout until the 27th of November. This discount code also acts as an affiliate code so you get a discounted module and support my channel. As well as the logic modules featured in this video, I can personally recommend their Takab 2 LPG dual passive low pass gates. I've previously bought a bunch of them, both in full size Euro rack and 1U. There are two of the 1U units in the racks that you see in this video. They are affordable, very space efficient and sound great. They've got that lovely natural decay that you want from a virtual based low pass gate. The VCO's Little Helper or VLH module is also worth investigating. It's a little 2HP marvel that packs ring modulation, sub octave generators and a noise source uh, to spruce up any VCO that you have in your rack. Thanks again to Sci Modular for supporting the channel and again that 10% discount code is OSCILLATORSYNC, all one word, and it's valid until the 27th of November. You can find details and links in the description of this video. Let's get back to logic. Let's start by basically replicating what we were just doing at sub audio rate at audio rate now. Uh, so that's going to be a slow, low frequency signal being combined with a faster, higher frequency signal. So what I've got here um, patched up is the square wave output from the 2HP VCO that's going into one input on the AND gate on the AND module. I'm molting that same signal and that's going into this clock divider, which as long as we don't go too high in pitch, will just act like a sub oscillator, uh, generating something a number of octaves down. I'm here on the 1 16th output, so we're quite a long way down um, compared to the original signal. And that's going into the other input on the AND gate. And if we turn that up, Because the frequency of the VCO is currently set pretty low, you can kind of hear it acting like it's got a square wave LFO going into a VCA, which is kind of what's going on here. Uh, the uh, AND gate is acting like a really hard VCA, and because our pitch is low, the sub oscillator is in sub audio rates. But as we turn it up, get this really cool sort of pseudo digital 8-bit-esque kind of arcade machine sound. And I love it when you sweep down it goes back into the sub audio rate as well and bring it up. Yeah, a really interesting sound. Now I've also got patched up the same things going into the XOR. And that gives us quite a different sound, something a lot more complex. Uh, it's worth noting actually that um, the pulse width uh, of the VCO is still going to affect things. We've got that on this knob here. So there it is on the AND gate. Excellent, you almost get this sort of pseudo sync sound.
really cool. Now the nice thing about these two signals is that they actually phase cancel in a really cool way when you mix them together. So I reckon we get a, uh, an LFO going there. We probably also get an LFO going on that pulse width. That so it doesn't go to zero. And then let's give it some reverb. Just look at that waveform. That is very satisfying. And maybe a little pitch sequence. a super complex sound and that's all from a single square wave output on the VCO and it's subactive that we're generating with the clock divider. Really really cool, really as I say kind of arcadey and this sort of hybrid faux digital sound. Very cool. But um we should explore things a little bit deeper here. We'll see what the module is doing to other wave shapes that aren't square. And then we'll take a look at combining other things to get more complex. And this combination of AND and XOR is really, really compelling. And spoiler alert, we might do something in stereo with that. But anyway. Yeah, let's take a look at what it does with other waveforms that aren't square. In the examples so far, I've pretty much only used square wave things, square wave LFOs, square wave oscillators, and there is a good reason for that, and it speaks to, should we call it a feature, rather than a limitation, although it is kind of a limitation of these kinds of modules. They're designed to work on this idea of high and low voltage. And that means there has to be a cutoff point between what is high and what is low. And if that sounds like a binary or square relationship, well, it kind of is. So um, this is what a triangle wave going into the XOR gate sounds like. And you'll be able to see on the uh, Oscilloscope, it looks um, pretty square. This is what a sawtooth wave going into that same gate looks like. Yeah, so essentially everything kind of gets um, squared off with these. However, there is kind of a side effect of this when you're using non-square wave shapes. I'm altering the level of the signal going into the gate here. And you can kind of hear and see a pulse width modulation thing happening. It's the same with the um, with the sawtooth as well, although a slightly different response. Uh, why is this happening? Well, it becomes slightly more easy to understand if we superimpose the original wave shape. So here's the original wave shape. At the moment, the gate isn't opening. When we get above a particular point, a tiny bit of the gate is going to open. Now, at the moment, the pulse width that we're seeing is really, really small. And that's because only a tiny bit of my triangle wave is peaking above the threshold 
for this to count as a high voltage. As I turn up the volume, more of my triangle wave is sat above that point, so there is more of the triangle wave which is counting as high voltage. And as I go further, more of it goes over the top. And that's why we get this kind of pulse width modulation thing happening. Um, I'll get rid of the original sound there. And then something else that happens here, uh, and you can kind of see it on the oscilloscope. It's not totally obvious Im immediately, but you'll notice that there's a lot more biasing towards the positive side of the oscilloscope, especially at lower voltages there than there is to the top. And that's because these modules kind of rectify the signal. It's not complete. You can see as I push more voltage in, some of it does flip negative, but for the most part, uh, it's rectifying, which does mean we lose some volume because we're essentially cutting off half of the wave's energy by not including the lower half of it. Uh, it's not so quiet that it does, it's unusable. Obviously in Europe, we have loads of level to work with, but it is something to bear in mind that things tend to go um, just to the uh, positive side with these uh, modules. The sort of exception to this is the OR module here, and that's because it's passive, um, and so it's a little bit more forgiving about different wave shapes. If we push the triangle into it, we can kind of see that we more or less get a triangle on one side, and then it squares it off on the other side, which is actually quite an interesting just wave shape. Uh, if we blend in the sawtooth, which is kind of out of phase, where it's ramping up one side, we can get an interesting set of wave shapes. The difference of just blending these two together. Not massively different, but it's got that square edge on the second half of the duty cycle, which gives it a different hollower sound. Probably not the main use for the OR module here, but it is an interesting side effect. And if you've got an OR module like this, which has multiple uh, inputs and outputs, you know, you might want to use it as a wave shaper almost. So although this probably wouldn't be my main use for these, even in this kind of context of misusing them at audio rate, the propensity that these modules have for turning everything into pulses and squares means that they can be used for uh, extremely aggressive fuzzy distortion, kind of bit crushed vibes. So I've got a drone here from Rings. Sounds like that. Just a classic Rings drone. And I'm running it into the XOR and the AND modules. I've just got a steady voltage on one of the inputs for the AND just to keep it open. And it turns it into this. So the sound is completely destroyed, essentially, but it is still in there and it's still reactive to it. Um, so I probably wouldn't use it on its own. But as something you can mix in for texture, that might actually be a really interesting texture that you could use on other uh, other sounds. Now, the one caveat here is that I'm having to actually run rings, which is already a fairly high output module, into Aikido to boost the signal in order to get it consistently over the threshold uh, for the logic modules. And even then, it's kind of not completely smashing it. I can't really push it any further. But yeah. As a kind of textual thing, that might be interesting, especially in stereo. I quite like it in stereo. But it's that kind of extreme square wave, fuzzy destruction of the sound. You know, barely keeping the, the note alive in there even. But as I say, as a texture, it's, it's worth knowing that it's there if you happen to have some logic modules going spare. 
But let's get to the main event here and kind of the reason I wanted to create this video in the first place, which is that where these logic modules really shine at Audio 8 is when you combine two different signals that aren't necessarily linked to one another. It was fun when we had the sub oscillator, but this is where the magic really happens. So I've got uh, the 2HP VCO square wave and the square wave from Pizza going into both the AND and XORs. So the AND one sounds like this. And if we detune and retune, It's like this really hard-edged, aggressive ring modulation, or amplitude modulation really. Which, in the case of the AND, that's basically what it is. The XOR, as with the other example where we had just the single oscillator going in there, it is a more complex proposition. And it's just this awesome hollow sort of mm, not ring mod but kind of ring mod but also this complex sort of almost phase modulation or pulse width modulation that's happening uh, the ring modulator it's not actually a ring modulator on the ARP Odyssey is implemented this way through an XOR. And as we saw earlier, when you combine them, they are going to phase cancel in really interesting ways. So modulating that might be fun, but there is a reason that I have this in the X-Pan, and that is because in stereo... This is glorious. And maybe we could grab uh, a sob oscillator and put that down the middle as well. Let's do that. So I'll take a um, mult off of there into the clock divider. And then we'll go out maybe the two octaves down as it would be down the middle. Oh, come on. Come on now. Stick a uh, pitch sequence in there somewhere. Maybe send it to both, or maybe just one. So let's just send it to just the uh, two HP. I mean, uh, so we could also have the other oscillator moving with it. At the moment it's just static. So a more consistent sound. Quite like it with it draining. Phase modulating that modulator one. Let's do that. It's 
retune it. some reverb. Let's uh, pitch sequence the other one but with a different sequence. Move that pitch sequence a bit, bit much. Can we get this through a filter? I've got a stereo filter here. some CV type filter. Grab some patch cables, low pass out. Just an awesome sound. Just an amazing way to combine oscillators and create complex but related harmonics. Uh, you know, ideally with square waves, but
Thanks for watching folks. As always, if you enjoyed the video, a like is always massively appreciated. And if you've got any favorite tricks for logic modules at audio rate or otherwise, leave them in the comments for other people to enjoy. As always, thank you so much for watching. Until next time, take care. Bye-bye.